okay, uh, for in the venture capital, okay, the venture capital market dari company tu dia tak ada apa-apa pun. So, uh, he only have a very good idea. So, he enter the uh, venture capital market and then found several venture capitalists. Dia jumpa venture capitalists, lepas tu that venture capitalists offer a uh, fund to the uh, idea owner. Lepas tu pula uh, venture capitalist tu nak uh, uh, apa tu the idea order dia akan evaluate lah the venture capitalist. How to evaluate yang kita discuss in chapter tu. Lepas dia evaluate and then they had uh, make an agreement they create the company. In the create company and then uh, business tu dah boom. Uh, I, I I just summarize in the chapter tu eh. So uh, business tu dah boom dah apa semua so they intend Uh, to raise another fund. They set up a corporation. Lepas tu nak another fund lagi. So in the raising fund, bila sekarang ni dia nak raising fund, dia nak akan pergi sama ada melalui debt ataupun melalui equity. But uh, for example, company ni sekarang nak raise fund through equity. Dia nak issue preferred stock atau uh, nak issue common stock. So in the first time when the company want to issue, dia tak akan terus pergi dekat season equity offering. Okay, because the company is not, uh, all is not, um, dia tak ada lagi kewujudan dia tiada lagi dekat uh, Bursa Malaysia ataupun dekat financial market tak ada lagi. So that company, that corporation, they need to go to the primary uh, market first in order to issue their share. Lepas dia issue share dekat primary market, lepas tu pula after few years, then he need another fund. Nak fund, dia nak issue share lagi. Okay, dia nak issue share lagi, dia tak, tak boleh pergi dekat primary market, dia akan issue dekat season equity offering. Ada season equity offering lah sama ada dia nak issue share tu dia buat right offering ke ataupun uh, apa tu direct direct of private placement ke and so on. Okay so itu kalau company tu dia nak issue share. Kalau company because uh, when we talking about uh, raising fund in the cap, uh, in the raising fund in the uh, financial market again what you mean by financial market financial market ni contohnya dekat Malaysia ada bursa Malaysia lah. Okay kita nak issue our financial paper. Okay, uh, company want to issue their financial paper in the financial market. So, uh, nak issue, dia akan issue sama ada, dia boleh issue financial paper dia sama ada dalam bentuk hutang ataupun dalam bentuk equity. Kalau dalam bentuk hutang, uh, ini yang kita kata sebagai debt lah, issue bond. Kalau dia nak dalam equity, dia akan issue preferred stock ataupun common stock. So, in general, issuing share uh, via equity, we had discussed in chapter 2. Okay. So now kita akan tengok chapter 3 is about capital structure. So when we talk about the capital structure, capital structure ni sebenarnya pasal apa? Capital structure ni, uh, this is uh, the combination of debt and equity. How much company have their debt, how much the company has their equity. And then why some of the firm dia ada banyak debt. Kenapa some of the firm dia ada banyak equity. So and then why it is very important to measure uh, ataupun to to evaluate ataupun kenapa sangat pentingnya untuk company ni dia nak tengok capital structure, nak jaga dia punya capital structure. Okay, so all of that kita akan belajar dalam chapter inilah chapter 3. So in chapter 3, sorry, nanti you betulkan you punya notes ni. Okay, this is not 4.1, this is 3.1. Okay, so uh, in this chapter, we will discuss on the capital structure decision, determining uh, capital structure and then factors in capital structure. The last one is about value of liver and unlivered. So the last one, value of liver and unlivered, this is all about calculation. Uh, we will do calculation in the next meeting lah. Hari ni kita tak buat calculation. Okay, so the first thing, what you mean the capital structure? Capital structure ni pasal apa? Okay, uh, capital structure, bila cakap the capital structure, uh, you kena ingat benda tu adalah pasal the composition of equity and debt. Company punya equity dan company punya debt. The capital structure is all about the combination of total debt and total equity. Debt and equity ni ada dekat mana ni? Debt equity ada dekat mana? Slash debt equity ada dekat mana? Cepat, 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 teka, teka, teka. Debt equity ada kat mana? Daripada diploma lagi kita dah cakap pasal debt and equity. So debt and equity dia place dekat mana? Place dia tu kat mana? Di manakah kedudukan debt dan equity? Ya? Yeah? Liability ni dia. Liability tu debt lah. Dia ada dekat mana? Liability tu ada kat mana? Cepat. 
Pas 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 record 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 balik ada dekat mana debt and equity? Asset ada dekat mana? Sebab sebab record balik record balik. Asset ada dekat mana? Uh, Asset. Debit, kredit itu account dia kan? Okey, apa yang tu? Bila kita cakap pasal asset, liability, equity, itu dalam apa? Financial position. Financial position, no. That show about the uh, financial position of the company. Tapi dia dalam apa? Dia financial statement kan? Tapi specifically dia dalam duduk dekat mana? Dia berada di mana? Ah, sebab recall balik yang you belajar dulu-dulu tu. Last time baru belajar. Benda ni benda basic sangat, benda basic sangat. Dia cakap pasal asset, liability, equity. Liability ni debt lah. So benda tu ada kat mana? Ada kat mana? Try your balance. Try balance tu, uh, in specific kalau kita panggil apa dia? Keluar tu try balance tu tapi ada benda tu kita panggil apa? Balance sheet. Okay, yes, balance sheet. Okay, dia ada dekat balance sheet lah. Okay, so debt and equity dalam balance sheet, kalau kita talk about balance sheet, you dah tahu dah balance sheet. Okay, it's all about asset. Liability, liability ni adalah debt lah, leverage and equity. Okay, if the company dalam balance sheet ni, kita boleh tahu tak dah, balance sheet ni pasal apa sebenarnya? Balance sheet, it tell you about what company own, this is what company own, apa yang company ada actually were financed by what company own. And this is what company own, dia berhutang. Apa yang company ada dekat bahagian ni sebenarnya adalah hasil daripada hutang dekat sini. Okay. So, uh, that's why lagi kita kata capital structure, bila cakap pasal hutang, you need to add optimize the capital structure. Okay, because dia kata why, maksudnya I kata kat sini hutang kan. Okay, kenapa I kata buat company? Oh, contohlah, company need to buy a building. Okay, building ke, nak set up dia punya P&E ke, plan and equipment ke and so on. So, bila nak buat set up building, company kena fikir, dia nak pakai debt ke ataupun nak pakai equity. Then dia kena tengok juga what are the benefit of using that? What are the benefit of using equity? So why company need to evaluate or need to assess all of this debt and equity? Banyak mana ni? Because dia kata benda debt and equity again, what you mean by debt and equity composition? This is all about the capital structure. So what it is very important, okay, to discuss about capital structure in the uh, corporation because capital structure will affect the value of a firm. Okay, value in term of the profit lah. Okay, the capital structure will affect profit of a firm. Okay, so how the capital structure will affect the value? What, what we are discussing about value here, sebab nanti in the last session dekat sini value of levered and unlevered firm dekat sini. Okay, ni yang value kita kata sebagai V lah. Value. Actually the value ni adalah asset dia. Okay, tapi dalam ni kita kata aset dia adalah profit. Okay, benda yang apa orang kata uh, berkaitan. Okay, so because say that the capital structure will affect the value also known as the profit of a firm. How? By minimizing WACC. So what you mean by WACC? WACC ni apa? WACC ni apa? WACC ni apa? Average cost. Yes, weightage average cost of capital. Okay, so WACC is the weightage average cost of capital. So, recall balik, mana you dapat WACC? WACC formula you dapat daripada W, E, R, E plus W, D, R, D, T. Alright, this is what you learn kan? Semasa lepas, betul? 
Betul juga dia belajar ni? Betul. Betul eh. So WACC is W-E-R-E-W-D-R-D-T. So W-E, what you mean by W-E? You belajar ni tu W-E ni dia cakap pasal apa? W-E ni pasal apa? Yes. This is all about percentage of equity, weight of equity, weightage, pemberat equity. Berapa banyak equity awak pakai? Whereas RE, what you mean by RE? RE ni apa? Nah, you belajar dulu. RE ni apa? Cost of equity. Yes, yes. cost dia. So, kita nak tahu berapa banyak yang kita company tu pakai equity, we, uh, kita masih refer to the company lah. So, how much that we use equity and then from ni, kita kena tahu lah what are the cost that involve with this equity. So, yang ni pun sama juga. Berapa banyak debt kita, okay, akan jadi berapa banyak kita punya cost of debt. Banyak betul lah Atlantan. You dengar tak? Sorry, saya nak tanya you dengar tak? Dekat rumah saya bising ke apa, ada dengar tak? Tak, tak dengar. Okey. 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 Sebab hari ni full house eh. Semua anak-anak saya ada kat rumah. Duduk ketuk-ketuk pintu ada berlari kat luar. Tak dengar Alhamdulillah. Okey. So dikata sini because uh, we very concerned about the capital structure. Sebab capital structure ni dia relate dengan WACC. Our cost of capital. And then cost of capital ni dia akan efek kepada kita punya ni, value of the firm. Okay, sebagai contohnya. So, how capital structure will effect kita punya, kita punya ni, value kita punya, dia kata tadi, capital structure will effect the value of the firm, which is represented by its profit. So, now, NPV stand for net present value. Net present value maksudnya adalah uh, when we buy a machine, okay, we need to do, uh, we need to evaluate dia punya income yang kita will generate from that machine kan. So yang income tu kita panggil dia sebagai net present value. Okay, recall yang you belajar dulu lah. Okay, this is uh, net present value. Uh, nanti kita akan belajar lagi balik eh. Dalam chapter 5, chapter 6 kita akan belajar balik tadi. Okay. okay, so in the net present value here, example net present value, So, uh, that present value hari tu dalam cash flow, kita ada belajar cash flow, ada kerja dengan cash flow. Dia ada annuity cash flow, lepas tu dia ada uh, annuity cash flow, lepas tu dia ada multiple cash flow, another one dia ada perpetuity cash flow. Perpetuity cash flow that mean that cash flow uh, is the, uh, dia tak ada, apa orang kata tak ada cash flow tu tak ada uh, limit, tak ada jangka hayat. Sampai bila-bila cash flow tu akan constant macam tu. Okay, so these are example. How capital structure, that means how debt and equity from this debt and equity it will effect, okay, with the company WACC. WACC is the cost of capital yang you kata tadi tu kan. Okay, so now this is a simple example. I want to show you WACC akan mempengaruhi value of the firm. Okay, for example, Company A, Company B, they have the different WACC. Okay, different WACC. So, ni dia nak evaluate machine lah. Okay, so dia bagi cash flow untuk machine tu, machine A, okay, 10 juta, machine B 10 juta with the same cash flow and also the same cost but different WACC. Okay. Kalau nak dapatkan net present value untuk cash flow perpetuity, formula kita adalah cash flow bahagi dengan WACC ataupun I ni cost kita tolak dengan cost. Okay. So dekat sini you tengok, lagi rendah WACC, okay, lagi tinggi lah kita punya profit di sini. Walaupun dia punya cash flow dan cost dia sama, dekat sini sama. Okay. Tapi WACC dia adalah berbeza. Dekat sini cost dia akan berbeza. That mean, uh, ini adalah contoh nak tukar you. Betapa pentingnya untuk company tu, dia kena consider 
dia punya debt and equity because of what again debt and equity will affect WACC WACC akan effect kepada value ataupun profit of the firm dekat sini Okay so when we talk about debt and equity itulah dia capital structure Okay so far dia faham? Clear? Ya yeah. Ya, yeah, madam. Faham. Ya. Yeah. Sorry eh. I minum kejap. Okay. So far boleh eh. Okay. So uh, ni lah yang kata tadi tu. Okay. Uh, in general secara kita panggil dia sebagai balance sheet lah. Okay. So uh, asset, debt and equity. Okay. So firm A and firm B. Okay so dekat sini tengok sebenarnya tak kira pun berapa banyak aset yang company ada At the end it must be balanced with that and equity Okay kalau dekat sini kita tengok kan So in the firm A you tengok The firm A dia, firm A, dia prefer dia punya debt dia tinggi Okay debt is higher than equity Kalau firm B pula dia nak kurangkan debt as compared with equity. Uh, so ni kita tengok why some of the firm they prefer that okay as compared with equity but why some of the firm they prefer to have hard, to have more equity as compared with that. Sebab apa? So tak kira lah sebenarnya berapa banyak debt ke equity ke apa ni ada at the end dia akan sama dengan dia punya dekat sini lah sebab tu kita kata dia balance sheet. Okay. Okay, tu yang kawan kata trial and balance tu kan. Uh, kita cuba buat dia bagi sama kalau dah account. Okay, so why yang ni you tengok. Okay, debt and equity. Kenapa ada certain, what are the advantage of having debt? Okay, so kenapa yang ni dekat sini kita tengok, kenapa dia ada banyak debt dekat sini? Okay, so okay. dekat sini equity value. Contoh dekat sini, saya tunjuk eh, the effect of leverage. So leverage, leverage adalah debt. Bila company tu ada debt, that mean company ada leverage hutang. So dengan bahasa senangnya bila cakap pasal leverage ni adalah debt lah macam tu. Okay. So the effect of leverage toward return and return on equity and earning per share. So return on equity, return on equity kita cari return on equity, formula dia adalah daripada uh, return, net income, equity, total, equity. Earning per share. Earning per share kita dapat daripada net income, okay, tolak dengan uh, equity, bahagi dengan, uh, ni apa ni formula dia? Earning per share, number of share outstanding. Okay. So, equity dekat sini dia tunjuk kat sini. Equity value. So, VU dekat sini. VU. A punya company A and company B. So, the VU that mean ini adalah company yang tak ada hutang. Unlivered. Okay, istilah dia adalah unlivered. So, VU bahasa senangnya ini adalah company yang tak ada hutang. Sebab kita tengok debt value dia adalah zero lah. Okay. VL ini adalah company yang ada hutang. So VL that mean company dia ada debt. Okay. So the equity value in the firm semua bila company tak ada hutang dekat balance sheet dia dekat sini this is asset katalah sini 100 ribu okay debt equity, debt dia akan kosong lah kan. So semua ni adalah equity. Equity dia semua 100 sini. 100. Sebab so, tu dia kata equity value, okay, 100,000, debt is zero. So total 100, ni maksudnya yang ni lah yang total ni. So this is 100, this is 100. Okay. And then we assume that the net income is 100,000. So earning per share dia, earning per share dan income total equity kita akan dapat satu ringgit and return on equity in the number of times kita akan dapat juga one times. Okay. 
kalau company tu ada hutang, BL that ni ada hutang. Okay, so ada hutang dekat sini, debt. Kenapa debt ni 100? Bukan, bukan. Ni salah. Ni you betulkan nanti eh. Kalau macam ni, asset, liability and equity. Liability is a debt lah. So dia ada 100,000 here. Okay. Ini adalah debt. This is equity. Equity dia kata 20,000. Eh, 20,000. 20. Debt adalah 80 lah dekat sini. So nanti you betulkan sini 80 eh. Okay. The total at the end dia akan jadi 100 sama. So the earning per share akan jadi tinggi. Okay. Bila company ada equity. Okay. Bila ada equity, bila ada equity, dia punya earning. So that mean with the introduction of equity, contohnya dekat sini, why this firm, they prefer to have higher equity as compared with this firm. Okay. Because it is said that bila ada okay, equity, the introduction of equity here, dia akan efek kepada earning per share written on equity and earning per share. Okay. So now you tengok debt and leverage. This is uh, page in the textbook eh. So financial leverage refer to the extent to which a firm rely on debt. So advantage of financial leverage, advantage adalah tax benefit, increase in ROE and earning per share. Equity, this is uh, we discuss about the introduction of equity. Increase ROE, disadvantage, high risk of bankruptcy. Okay, so ni tax benefit and increase in ROE and earning per share. Okay, dia, yang ni kita start daripada uh, in the income segment. I tak ambil daripada revenue apa eh. Kita terus ambil operating profit. EB. Okay, let's say this is company A, this is company B. Dan kita sini lah. Okay, EB, company A, company B. Untuk So, EBIT dia sama EBIT, kita ambil yang senang 100. Earning before interest tax, tolak dengan interest. Interest ni apa sebenarnya? Interest ni, interest yang kita bayar kepada kita punya penghutang kan? Ini termasuklah coupon payment, interest kita buat loan. So, that mean this interest ada kena mengena dengan debt. Okay, when the company have a debt, okay, company need to pay interest as the cost of financing. So, bila ada macam you lah kan, PTPTN you kena charge interest kan. Kita buat loan dengan bank pun kena charge interest juga. Okay, so sebab tu kalau debt, ada interest. So, let's say company A, dia tak ada debt. Zero. Tak ada debt adalah VU. Company B, dia ada hutang. Ni 100 eh. So this company is PL. Dia ada hutang. Let's say hutang dia adalah 10. Okay. So earning before tax for company A is 90. Sorry, 100. Company ni punya adalah 90. Okay. Then tax. Kita ambil yang paling senang. Corporate tax, katalah dia charge 10%. 10% from this 100 adalah 10. Okay. 10% daripada 90 adalah 9. Ni katalah 900,000 ke something like that lah. So kita dapat earning after tax. So sini at the end dia akan dapat 90. Sini dia dapat 80. Satu, ni after tax. So, dia kata for the tax benefit, okay, tax benefit, yang inilah you tengok. Kalau company tu ada 
tab, ada hutang, dia cuba bayar tax kurang daripada company yang tak ada hutang. Macam tu. Okay. But, uh, sebab tu nak some of the, but uh, apa orang kata, bila kita cakap tentang hutang, even though we uh, believe that dengan hutang ni dapat mengurangkan kadar tax, okay, tetapi hutang ni sebenarnya dia lagi banyak hutang, orang tak ada hutang, lagi tinggi dia punya chance of going bankrupt. Okay, so uh, example of increase ROE and earning per share dia ada dalam buku tax dekat situ. Kalau yang ni example dia untuk dia ada uh, introduction of equity yang ni. Okay. So, itu contoh dia. Now, kita tengok pula teori yang relate dengan capital structure. So, uh, several theory that relate with the capital structure, dia ada dalam chapter 4. Tapi dalam chapter 3 ni kita cuma discuss M&M. Okay. So, M&M refer to the uh, Molecularly and Miller. Dia ada M&M preposition 1, M&M preposition 2. Okay. So, the capital structure theory, dia kata trade of theory of capital structure, the theory allow the bankruptcy cost to exist. It state that there is an advantage to financing with debt, namely the tax benefit of debt and there is a cost of financing with debt. Then bankruptcy cost and the financial is a cost of debt. So, dia kata dalam trade of theory ni, kalau M&M preposition 1, M&M preposition 2. Okay. M&M preposition 1 and preposition 2 ni, dia discuss pasal uh, company ni dia elok ada debt banyak uh, discuss about the capital structure actually. And then dia kata that, okay, kalau capital structure ni, kalau company ni ada debt, kalau company ada debt, uh, what are the pros, the, the real pro and cons of having debt? Okay, dia ada kata dekat sini, dia kata a lot of bankruptcy cost. Dia kata kalau ada debt, uh, nanti akan face with the bankruptcy cost. Okay. Tapi pula benefit dia apa dia pula? Kalau ada ni dia kata dia tak ada bankruptcy, dia advantage namely the tax benefit. Tapi kalau ada debt ni pula, kita akan dapat tax benefit. Itu yang dikisah salah M&M theory. The Modigliani Miller theorem proposed by Franklin Modigliani and Michael Miller form the basis of modern thinking capital structure that is viewed as a theory theoretical blah 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 apa semua. So dia kata uh, combination of debt and equity will affect the value. Okay. So dalam M&M ni actually dia cerita pasal dua benda. Okay, dia kata the debt and equity, the debt and equity that refer to the uh, orang kata capital structure. Okay, so the capital structure akan effect kepada dua. Satu effect kepada value of the firm. So value of the firm dekat sini you akan tengok based on VU ataupun VL. So VU again, VU ni apa? Company yang ada hutang ke tak ada hutang? Tak ada. Tak, ada. tak ada hutang. Tak ada. VL company ada hutang. So M&M preposition dia discuss pasal dua, pasal satu value of the firm. Kalau company yang ada hutang, eh, ada hutang dan company tak ada hutang, macam mana dia punya uh, profitability dia. And then instead of uh, discuss about uh, how capital structure will affect the value of the firm, dia akan kata juga dan juga affect the cost of capital, WACC. Therefore, sebenarnya dia kata kalau ada hutang ke uh, the, combi the, the combination of debt and equity, dia akan effect VUVL uh, which is the value of the firm. Another one, dia akan effect WACC. Yang ni kita dah tengok tadi, cost of capital. Tapi sebenarnya dia bukan nak tengok WACC sangat. Tapi dia nak tengok ni, RE, the shareholders equity. Dia kata we effect WACC, therefore it will effect the shareholder equity RE. Because of what you tengok WACC, dia ada ni E per V. E per V adalah W E lah. Okay. D per V, this is W D. So R E, ni, ni formula ni nanti memang you kena hafal lah. Eh. Okay. WACC equal to E per V, R E plus D, D per V, R D T. So V arrange sebab uh, M&M preposition 2, in the M&M preposition 2, dia nak tengok pasal R E. Kita tengok pasal shareholder equity sebab apa? Recall balik apa matlamat utama. Matlamat utama fund manager, they want to maximize the shareholder wealth. Okay, kita nak maximize shareholder wealth. Indicator of maximizing shareholder wealth selain daripada tengok harga saham tu naik, salah satunya adalah kita akan tengok based on dia punya RE. 
Okay, because RE, you kata tadi, RE adalah cost kan? So, bila cakap pasal cost, cost sebenarnya adalah represent untuk kita punya return ataupun profit kita. Okay, I bagi you contoh kenapa kata cost ni adalah return. Okay, contoh yang paling senang. Katalah, uh, apa ni, mouse ni kan? I nak jual mouse ni. I mouse ni cost dia, I nak jual. Cost mouse ni RM10. So, cost RM10, bila dah dapat detect cost RM10, therefore, kita boleh tahulah minimum, what will be our minimum uh, selling price that we need to sell in order to get return. Sebab tu bila cakap pasal cost, dia akan relate dengan return. Nah, sebab tu dekat sini dia kata WACC ni uh, capital structure will effect WACC. So sebenarnya kita nak tengok dia punya akan effect kepada shareholder equity. So M&M preposition 1 is about that uh, value of the firm. Uh, Ni lah value of the firm D plus E. So VU VU ni maksudnya apa? Company yang tak ada hutang. So bila kami tak ada hutang, the total value of the firm only based on E, equity. Kalau company yang ada hutang, VL, value dia will depend on debt and equity. Okay. So in general yang ni, in details kita akan tengok besok lah bila kita buat calculation tu. Okay, so secara dasarnya I nak you fahamkan konsep dulu Bila cakap pasal tak ada hutang VU, VU tak ada hutang Definitely semuanya akan pasal EPT ni You recall balik yang I tulis tadi tu kan Dalam dia ada asset Debt and equity Kalau tak ada debt, katalah sini asset dia 100 Maknanya equity dia akan jadi 100 lah Okay, so yang ni Contoh yang ni Kalau VL pula Asset dia ada debt, ada equity. Ni 100, let's say debt dia 30, debt, equity dia 70. So, this is equity, sorry. So, yang ni, BL, macam tu. So, M&M preposition tu, dia nak cakap pasal RE. Sebab tu lah, nanti dalam soalan, dalam soalan test ke, soalan quiz ke, apa semua, kita bagi you WACC, kita minta you cari RE. Macam mana nak dapatkan RE? Uh, ni formula dia. Actually, RE, this RE, okay, working from formula WACC. Yang ni. Okay, so yang ni adalah uh, the concept dia sajalah. So, when we talk about uh, the M&M, uh, M&M ni adalah uh, molecular ni and miller. So dia cakap macam ni, assumption. Ha, semua teori, macam dia belajar teori ekonomi, dia akan ada assumption dia kan. Ha, kita assume income constant. Ha, dalam ekonomi, say that. So, uh, M&M teori assumption dia kata no tax and no bankruptcy cost. So dia kata dalam dunia ni, tak ada pun istilah tax dan tak ada pun istilah bankruptcy cost. So when there is no tax, no bankruptcy cost. Ini assumption. Padahal memang tak logik lah kan dalam dunia ni nak tak ada tax dan tak ada bank taxi kau tak logik. But this is only the issue. Okay, tak boleh assumption. When there is no tax and no bank taxi cost, so it is say that capital structure is irrelevant. Okay, maksudnya kalau tak ada pun benefit tax, tak ada pun benefit bank uh, tak ada pun advantage, uh, tak ada pun cerita pasal bank taxi cost, so tak ada guna pun kalau kita nak cari capital structure ni. Okay. And then, yang ni you, you jelah hai, you faham eh? Sebab apa? Sebab dia kata kita sebenarnya kenapa company ni dia nak ada tax? Sebab kita kata dengan adanya tax ni nanti kita dapat mengurangkan kita punya tax. Jadi I bagi tunjuk dia contoh tu kan? Okay. Tapi dia kata kalau tak ada tax pada dunia ni. Okay. Dekasi kos pun tak ada. So that's why dia kata macam tu. Kalau tak ada pun capital structure CS I tunjukkan dia kata this is irrelevant. Okay. And then assumption number two, dia kata, kalau ada tax but no bankruptcy cost. Dalam dunia ni memang kita dapat tax benefit. Okay, kalau ada debt, you will get tax relief. But there is no bankruptcy cost. Banyak mana pun kita berhutang, kita tak ada pun uh, orang nak kerja kita supaya dapat bankruptcy. Okay, so kalau yang ni, dia kata, company, in the company, capital structure, perlu lebih banyak debt. Lagi banyak hutang, lagi bagus. Macam tu. Okay, but, uh, in the, tapi yang ni pun sebenarnya tidak logik lah. Satu, nombor dua ni tak relevan. 
Then number three dia kata, okay, dia kata we assume that there is a tax and other bankruptcy cost. So ini betapa pentingnya we need to find the optimum capital structure. Kena cari betul-betul debt and equity kita berapa. Okay. I pun sebenarnya masih memulai baca kan. I pun tak faham kenapa kena cerita pasal benda ni kan. Dah tahu memang tak logik. Salah silah dia kan cakap je lah pasal benda ni kan. Oh, okay. Cakap je lah pasal ni. Yang satu dua ni tak payah lah nak cakap. Tapi macam tak takpelah dia boleh cakap macam tu. Macam tu. Okay. So okay. Capital uh, M&M. M&M uh, dia ada dua. You ingat preposition one, preposition satu dan preposition dua. Preposition one dia cakap pasal apa? Value of the firm. Preposition Tu dia cakap pasal WACC. Most specifically sebenarnya dia nak cerita pasal RE. Okay. So this is without tax. This is with tax. Okay. M&M preposition one deal with the firm value. Okay ni uh, ni sebenarnya dengan with tax. Without tax a firm relative proposition of tax on liquidity don't matter. Ni tadi I dah cerita kat sini lah sebenarnya. Value of firm before that equal to value of firm after that. Value of firm remain the uh, value of firm remain the same. Kalau tak ada tax, tak ada tax benefit ke apa, dia kata unchanged. Kalau ada with tax, the firm with the greater proposition of that is more valuable because of the interest tax shield. Okay, value of firm after that increase. So value of the firm, kita akan consider value of firm after that increase. Uh, nanti benda ni, benda ni semua ni kita akan tengok bila kita buat calculation lah. Okay. And then Uh, M&A preposition 2 Okay, they deal with the cost of capital which is WACC More specifically, dia nak cakap pasal RE So, without that, sense of that equity ratio do not affect WACC Definitely takkan ada effect WACC As the proposition of the increase, each return on equity increase WACC remain the same Kalau ada tax change in the type of equity ratio because of the tax saving from greater proposition blah blah blah, WACC will decrease Okay So ini adalah the formula summary of M&M preposition 1 and 2. So again preposition 1 dia cakap pasal value of the firm. Preposition 2 kita cakap pasal cost of equity. So this is before that, after that. Ini untuk memudahkan lah. Sebenarnya dia kata without that. With. Okay ini dia cakap pasal tax. Okay ini dia cakap pasal tax. Bila dia kata kalau tak ada tax, tak guna pun kita ada tax. Ha, dia cakap macam tu. Tapi kalau ada tax, okay, itu yang advantage kita ada tax. So dekat sini kita akan discuss kat sini uh, ada yang value of the firm ni okay, kita cakap pasal company ni ada, ada dekat sini dia macam you kena faham sikit eh. Okay. M&M preposition 1 and preposition 2. M&M preposition 1 kita cakap pasal apa? Pasal value of the firm. Number one, kita cakap pasal value company tu. Dalam value of the firm, dia ada pula value dia yang tak ada hutang dan value dia yang ada hutang. Dalam value yang ada hutang tak ada hutang ni, dalam M&M assumption, they did mention about the tax. So, VU ni, you kena tengok dua. Kalau VU ni, dia tak ada tax macam mana? Tak ada tax. Kalau VU ni, dia ada tax macam mana? VL pun sama. Kalau company ni ada hutang, tapi company ni tak ada tax, value dia jadi apa? Kalau company ni ada hutang, tapi dia ada tax, okay, value dia tu macam mana? So, yang ni dia kata before that. Okay, so before that, that mean VU. Without tax. VU, VU equal to E. With tax. Okay. Sebab dia kata dekat sini, kalau kita tengok. Hmm. Okay. Kalau ada tax, a firm with the greater proposition of that is more valuable because of the interest tax shield. Okay. Maksudnya uh, advantage of the in tax ni lah. So kalau company ni, okay. Dia tak ada hutang tapi dia ada advantage. Okay, of the tax. Kalau dunia ada tax, so EB satu tolak tax bahagi dengan 
R U. So R U sebenarnya apa? R U dekat sini adalah cost of capital. Cost of capital dalam bahasa kita ni kita kata cost of capital is W A C C kan? The weightage of the cost of capital. So cost of capital without that yang tak ada hutang kita panggil dia sebagai R U. After that, without, okay ni after that, VL pula. So this is VL. Kalau tak ada tax, VL equal to VU. Tak ada tax. VL, kalau tak ada tax, VL ni akan sama dengan V2. VU ni macam mana? VU ni sama dengan E. Ha, macam tu. Kalau ada tax, VL kena ada kata macam sikit. VL equal to VU tambah tax kali dengan tax. So nanti I try cari uh, sebab dah lama dah sebenarnya tak keluar soalan yang tak ada tax ni sebenarnya. Tetapi yang dulu-dulu punya soalan ada. So uh, I try to find uh, for both question yang ada tax and without tax lah. Okay. Uh, I, I try to find and we will discuss tomorrow. Kalau, kalau jumpa kita akan buat yang untuk ada tax dan tak ada tax. Okay. Kalau tak ada kita akan sebab kebanyakan soalan dia akan keluar yang ada tax je. Okay so kalau tak ada kita akan buat satu je lah. Okay. So this cost of equity RE. Proposition 2 discuss pasal RE sama je. Before that with tax. Kalau without tax. Kalau without tax cost of capital. Okay. So RE sama dengan RA. Okay. Un, dipanggil ni RE ni apa? I, I lupa dah. Dia punya istilah dia. So cost of capital kalau tak ada tax RE dia akan jadi RA. Simbol dia. Kalau ada tax cost of capital WACC dia akan jadi RU. Okay after that WACC yang ni lah new WACC RE. Ini sama. Without tax WACC you tengok eh. Without tax WERE ni WE kan. E per V actually is W E R E plus W D R D. Dia beza ni. Itu you tengok. R D. Kalau ada tax dia akan ada ni. Ni yang kita buat R D T. Kalau ada tax. Kan you buat R D T kan. So R D T ni sebenarnya you dapat daripada mana? Daripada R D satu tolak tax. Formula dia macam tu sebab tu you dapat R D T. Ha yang ni. Okay. So yang ni semua ni kalau cakap detail pun you tak berapa dapat sangat. So nanti uh, minta you print ke benda yang banyak-banyak minta you print yang ni. Okay so nanti besok uh, masa kita buat exercise nanti kita akan refer lah formula ni. Okay boleh? Boleh madam. Boleh. Eh, so uh, untuk uh, untuk besok I akan bagi dia tu. I cuba dulu cek soalan. Cakap banyak-banyak pun nanti kan macam kurang benefit juga lah kan sebab kita tak buat. Kalau kita buat sama-sama tu baru kita nampak. So this is exercise. Nanti I try cari soalan lah. Okay so minta you print. Kita akan buat. Okay. So itu adalah chapter 3. Okay ni chapter 4. Chapter 4 ni pasal dia punya uh, teori je. Agency cost of capital. Capital structure limit to the use. Cost of financial distress. This is only other concept. So yang ini Uh, I ingatkan I nak masuk kan benda ni kan Okay Nanti tengok masa dah pukul 11 sebab uh, Yang ni nanti I buat video I bagi dekat you boleh? Boleh Boleh Eh hey, Astagfirullahaladzim Masya Allah saya tengah tengok chapter 4 Sedangkan you tak nampak chapter 4 yang saya tunjuk tu Chapter 4. Okay, this is chapter 4. Capital structure, limit to the use. Uh, yeah, ni. Uh, this is all, all the theory lah. Higher debt, semua so benda ni. Uh, agency cost of equity, apa dia. Agency cost ni tak ada, tak ada benda apa. Packing order. Okay. So yang ni, ni ada sikit je. So nanti saya akan buat uh, short video. Okay. So nanti saya akan bagi dekat you lah. Macam tu. Okay. Okay, so far uh, itu sahaja untuk chapter 3. So again